All right. I invite you to sample me. I am here as a canopy, an hors d'oeuvre of poetry, a tasty little pastry, a tangy little tart, a donut with a whole lot of vocabulation. I want to be your cup of tea with a slice of fresh rind, a literary revelation here to show you a good time. Here to represent, here to keep it real, here to join a beat generation for a wordsmith meal. Set me out on your plate, on your white paper table. I want to make your mouth water for a taste, just a nibble. I am Edgar Allen's daughter, E.E. E. Cummings' sister, Ginsburg's fist, Dickinson's kiss. You can't label me or put me in a box, but you can pick me up, lick me up, consider my wishes. What do you know? I might be delicious. Reach out for a sample, move in for a bite. Listen and let me be your tidbit, your morsel, your mouthful of poetry tonight. Yeah, get down, girl. All right. Well, I... Fuck poetry. Fuck poetry. There you go. You do it when you limit it. Sometimes when you imitate it. Sometimes you fuck it up. Fuck it down and sometimes you make it come. Other times, you use poetry, trying to get yourself off, and it's not impressed. If you must fuck something, you might as well make it poetry, but you sure as hell better listen to it a little. Listen to it a lot. Give it the attention it deserves, lick it, love it, make it hot before you stab into it. And don't be surprised when poetry is an ass and expects a reach around. When it wants to screw you now, use you like you used it to get itself off on your shit. You get what you give and what you got coming. You die as you live and in the end the love you take is equal to the love you make, not just the love you did not break. So, fuck poetry. Fuck it right, bring it to life, give it yours and make it quake. Maybe, if you treat it right, poetry will let you come too. All right, yeah. Right on, brother. Well, there weren't the boundaries. If they were ever there. Oh my God, did we have boundaries? Nobody told me. The way he says fuck. I love the way he says fuck. His full lower lip curling in against his teeth, holding that F breathing through it with a soft exhalation of ugh. The K ending up in the back of his throat like he's making love to me with the word alone. Fucking me slow and gentle. Caressing me with the shaft before ramming that hard K home. All right. Oh, man. You're making me... You're making me want to turn straight, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh -huh. This poem is entitled, Think You Very Much. T-H-I-N-K. I met your gaze in a Borders bookstore, and out of a haze I was trying to ignore, I saw stars. Brighter stars than I'd ever seen before. I saw life after war, and aisles and aisles and miles of pure, profane, divine, delicious poetry in your eyes. Thank you very much. I quickly turned my head hoping she wouldn't see, but how could she not notice the long neglected Nova brightening suddenly, dazzling unexpectedly inside of me? 
Determined to deny and declare it a lie, I donned imaginary black sunglasses and nervously recited a poem about being engaged and uncaged, all the while wishing that both were true and pretending not to be thinking of nothing but you and the aisles and aisles and miles of poetry in your eyes. Thank you very much. And on my way house with her, cause it's not home. I forgot to forget to remember your name and she complained because bright lights at night are a harmony to which her eyes, ears, and fears are unaccustomed. And the stars in my guise were giving her a headache. A few weeks later, you're in my starry eyes, crossed again in a much smaller, more intimate store, and I swore I wouldn't get lost so easily this time. I'd even come prepared wearing unimaginative black Ray-Bans. But you can't hide stars behind tinted glass. You can't hide present or future from the past. And so she happened to catch a couple of happy stars at dance in the way I glanced at a book about us, Grant. Do the letters U.S. stand for United States, she asked. And though I knew who they really represented, I said simply, Ulysses Simpson. Lest she realize I was still mesmerized, adrift in a longing for life after war, lost in the aisles and aisles and miles of pure, profane, divine, delicious poetry in your celestial eyes. Thank you very much. Excellent. Well. He's reading love poetry, so I think it's time for me to read some love poetry. Ooh. Uh oh. Ooh. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> hey -o. All right. Here we go. This one's called Sugar, Spice, and Everything Twice. <laughs> the taste of you. The making my heart race of you. The making my heart ache for you. The let's make haste, don't want to wait of you. The wrap my legs around the waist of you. The rattle roll and shake of you. The moving heaven and earthquake of you. The salt and sweet and spicy hot of you. The what the heck, why not of you. The naughty, wicked wit of you, the never will say quit of you, the slender fingered fit of you, the wet my pussy spit of you. The baby, you're so street of you, the no one can compete with you, the you make me complete of you, the teasing, pleasing tongue of you, the heat of your lust treat of you, the ooh, you get so hard of you, the you make me see stars of you, the pluck the strings of my guitar of you, the lick my mind and suck my diction, sense of humor, fact and fiction of you. The coffee breath and grind of you, the simple and complex of you, the all wound up and then unwind of you. This moment, frozen, here, in time with you. The kisses quick and stroking slow of you, the privacy and show of you, the I will never know enough of you. The lips, the hair, and eyes of you, the rise to heaven, fall to hell of you, the sight, the touch, the sound, the smell of you, the taste of you. Whoa. Yeah, we actually got kicked out of a bookstore for reading poetry like that. Can you believe it? Hey! It's great to be in a place where you can be free to, you know, be and say what you want to be and say. You know, right. be who you are. 